In a few minutes, Cassie Devine, Senior Vice President for the QuickBooks platform and IWN's executive sponsor, will interview these amazing women to find out more about them, how they run their business, and how they continue to embrace equity. Before we get started, here are a few things to note. We want to make sure to answer all of your questions for each business, so please post your questions in Zoom during um, using the Q&A feature below, and we will get to them during our time together. And once again, keep an eye out for what's to come at the end. You will not want to miss this. Thank you everyone so much for being here. I am now going to turn it over to Cassie for today's pop-up. Cassie, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you everybody for being here. I, I learned a new word, she rose, she rose <laughs> in the chat today. And, and that definitely describes this group. For me, I feel like I won the pop-up lottery because not only are these four amazing entrepreneurs here, but they are business owners that are a part, their products are a part of what keeps me sane and, and happy each week. I have a mega babe moment every morning in my shower and my husband is not allowed to touch that piece of soap. And I really, you know, you see mega babe printed on the first thing you see in the morning and it is just awesome. My weeks are calm because I have a Saver Beauty Planner, and that is really all of the next 90 days, just with amazing rituals that keep me grounded and reflection and organization, and it is perfect. And I keep energy up with my safe sneakers because I'm out on a walk. And there is a Girl Meets Dirt Lavender Rhubarb Jam that is a part of my sacred alone time ritual at the end of the week that may involve a glass of wine and a big hunk of cheese and, and that jam spread all over it. So it is so exciting to get to talk to all of you. Thank you for being here. And I want to dive in. Everybody wants to get to hearing more about your stories. So Angela, I'd love to start with you and hear a little bit about what made you take a step back and decide to, to jump in and start Saver Beauty? Well, I was a concert pianist on tour and about to walk out on stage and put on this natural lotion all over my body and started to break out into hives in front of hundreds of people, which is so humiliating, horrifying actually. And so when I got off the stage, I took a look at the list of ingredients and was shocked to find out how many chemicals there were in this so-called natural formula. So I just, as a hobby, because I was a pianist, an artist, I just went into my kitchen and started experimenting with lotions and potions. And I kept trying, you know, as a concert pianist, you're trained to do things, practice things over and over again for perfection. So every morning I just would make a new lotion. I would add different ingredients and most of which were failures. But then after like a thousand tries, um, you know, I think I had a really beautiful cream and I gave it to my Korean mom. Korean women are very specific about their skincare. She loved it, started to give it to friends as gifts. And they started to ask me, how can I purchase this, you know, beauty cream? And I became an accidental entrepreneur from there. <laughs> what an awesome story. One of the things I love about uh, your business is also the newsletter that you send out that has these just bits of like how you're approaching life and great tips. It's just such a neat uh, accompaniment to all of the amazing products that you sell. Thank you so Audra, much, Kathy. What about you? Um, I'm not so much an accidental entrepreneur as I am an accidental jam maker. <laughs> Um, I have no formal training in the culinary arts. Um, I grew up loving to cook um, and I've always loved fruits and my mother and my grandfather were pie bakers. Um, so that's the first thing I do with fruits is make pies. Um, but I had an accidental career on Wall Street for 10 years uh, working in um, currency and interest rate derivatives. And I'm originally from the Northwest and was every couple of years trying to figure out how to get back to my home. Um, the West was calling me like a beacon. So in 2011, um, my uh, then just new husband and two dogs decided to just turn our lives upside down and buy five acres on Orcas Island, where I had grown up boating with my family. Um, and we didn't have um, didn't have jobs, didn't have anything lined up. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. I knew that I was done with finance and Wall Street um, and wanted to find something really inspiring. I had always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, but 
it needed to feel um, inspired. So when I moved to Orcas, um, the property that we bought, the five acres had 10 fruit trees and come the first harvest, one Shiro plum tree yielded 150 pounds of fruit. That's a lot of pies. <laughs> um, so I started making jam simply because I don't like wasting things, started giving it away. People liked it. Um, and then I gave some away to my neighbor and they mentioned that they had some Bartlett pear trees and did I want their pears to make jam? And I said, sure. And they said, do you know about the history of Orcas Island with fruit production? I said, no, I don't. Um, I quickly learned that in, in the early 1900s, Orcas was actually a major fruit producing region. It was actually the fruit basket of the West. So when I started looking around, I realized that there were these trees that were 100 plus years old um, that were still producing fruit and nobody was doing anything with it. Um, so that combined with some um, the confidence of my friends telling me I was making something that was quite delicious, um, the light bulb went off and I decided to dive in and start a business making and selling jam tailored for cheese and charcuterie pairings. So our businesses, um, we make uh, jams uh, tailored for cheese and charcuterie, shrubs and bitters. And just this last year, we launched a line of natural sparkling wines made from orchard fruit. Just amazing. The, the shrubs that you make are so good. They have made my 11 year old daughter now. She has a a taste for them. So if she has ever gets to go out to a restaurant, and have a mocktail, she's like, this isn't as good as the girl. <laughs> and it, uh, <laughs> just, just an amazing product. Lauren, I'd love for you to tell us the story of Seish. Yeah. So, um, I've been with Seish since we launched, but, um, Allison Felix, who's our founder, um, created Seish basically based off of the, you know, inequality she was experiencing as a mother and as an athlete as she was renegotiating her contracts with Nike. They weren't protecting her as an athlete and as a mom. Um, so she said, if you're not going to protect me and you're not going to make, you know, equity for all women and all mothers coming back, you know, after having our babies, then I'm not going to be able to stay with you as a sponsor. So she was about to go into the Olympics as one of the most decorated, you know, female track and field athletes in the U.S. without a shoe sponsor. So her and her brother had the wild idea, well, what if we build our own shoe company? What if we do it ourselves? So they set off to, you know, kind of get the best experts in the U.S. and create a running spike for Allison to run in the Olympics. In that process, they realized that almost all sneakers are made off a last, which is a mold for a man's foot. So all the shoes we've been wearing our whole lives, sneakers, running shoes are made for a man first, for a man's foot. And they were blown away. They couldn't believe it. They were like, how is this possible? Like how, you know, the, our whole lives we've been wearing shoes made for men. And it's a bit of like a secret in the industry that like, yeah, it's been off a man, which again, as us women, not super surprising, but we've been wearing shoes that are made off a man's body weight, man, you know, proportions, measurements. So in realizing this, her and her brother Wes realized we need to create shoes made for women. And, you know, we've seen other companies do this um, since then, but all of the, you know, the really the big ones haven't been speaking to women. So Seish was created to give women the feeling that we want something and deserve something for our bodies, for our fit. And this is a shoe and shoes made for the female foot. Um, me personally, I've been at big corporate companies, you know, my whole career and had actually quit my job at New Balance and had no next step because I was really burnt out from corporate and being in, you know, the world we all understand can be crazy as like a, you know, a mom and um, found out what Allison and Wes were doing. And I said, this is my dream. Like, this is my dream job to be able to bring sport, wellness, and equity for women in a way that couldn't be more authentic through Allison and Wes's lens. Um, and it was just, it's really been a dream to be able to combine passion and mission and really create change for women and make women feel like, no, we do deserve better. We do deserve to be part of the big measurements and all the stats, and it shouldn't all be based off men because we are out here too, and we deserve products made for us. Heck yes. I think for anybody who has a say shoe, you realize the first time you put it on, you're like, oh yeah, this, <laughs> this is the, a different fit feeling than I've ever had with any shoe. And it is really cool. And I love, you know, 
I remember reading about Allison's decision at the time and you're, it was so exciting to then have something to then put my support with and, and vote with my dollars and, and benefit as a result. So neat. Thank you for being here. Katie, my favorite mega babe, tell us the mega babe and your story. Well, I'm just sitting here. I'm so inspired by everyone. Um, I hope I can do the same for everyone out there. Wow. So I started mega babe. Uh, we're going into our sixth summer um, because my thighs chafe and I have boob sweat and I have butt acne and all these very normal body things that uh, big beauty wasn't really talking about. So I decided to grab my sister and my best friend from growing up. And I was like, we have no beauty experience, but I think we can do this. I want to make a, a thigh chafe solution that is clean and not embarrassing to pull out of your handbag that actually works and is made for chafe. So, um, and we actually, we put a code right here in the chat, <clears throat> which I did not get to everyone before this, this call. So sorry about that, but it's, it's in there. Um, so we decided that we were going to take this on. And it's so funny as we were launching, and I think this is, this is very true with many woman-owned businesses. We met with men who are kind of the behind the scenes people, because I think manufacturing and um, a lot of those, a lot of those industries are still very male dominated. And they were like, no one, no one needs this product. This is like not something any woman's going to buy. And I was like, cool. Thanks for telling me. Um, and we, we ended up buying, ordering 10,000 units of our thigh rescue. And, and I decided to make a talc free body dust that you could pump right into your bra to absorb bra sweat for boob sweat. And, um, we had 20,000 units in my parents' garage. And, uh, we thought this is going to be really fun in two years when we have to figure out where to put these because they didn't sell, but we sold out of everything in the first month of launch, which, which really just like made me give the middle finger to the manufacturers we met with who like, didn't think that what we had was a thing. Um, and we're now in every target, every Ulta, we've won like best product of the decade from into the gloss. We won two of uh, Allure best of beauty awards for our thigh rescue and our Latouche mask. And, um, I think the main thing that we're doing aside from pro providing products that work is providing women confidence to realize that what they're feeling is not abnormal. There's no shame in not having a thigh gap. There's no shame in realizing that like a deodorant isn't going to work for you. And you gotta, you know, you might have BO stronger BO you sweat a lot but we, we deal with sticky feet. We deal with all the things that, that people have taught us that women aren't supposed to talk about. And so we're normalizing conversations and, um, I'm pretty sure it's my life's work. That is so awesome. You know, the first time I, the thigh rescue is the first product I ever got. And, when it arrived, my husband was like, oh, does this mean you're not going to steal my like talc cream when we're on vacation and out? I'm like, yeah, no, we're done. Like somebody finally <laughs> sees me and knows what I need. Just, yes. I yeah. highly recommend all of your products. Thank you very much. Thank you. No talc. No one should be using talc on any, anybody. Oh no. Yeah. You realize once you leave that, you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. that yeah. was the worst. But, but until, until you find mega babe, you, you might be making bad choices. Well, thank you. Audra, I'd love to have you share a little bit about the ins and outs of running a business and, and what do you love about it? What keeps you going? What are some of the, the things that you struggle with that you push through though to meet the challenges that, that you have with Girl Meets Dirt? Sure, yeah, that's a lot in two minutes, but <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> um, you know, a big inspiration for starting this business for me and why I wanted to be an entrepreneur is because I really hit a wall working on Wall Street, um, feeling like um, I couldn't be successful professionally in the way that I wanted to be. Um, 
and also live the life that I wanted. There was a point where my boss who I reported into and I admired her so much, but she had just turned 40. She had just made partner. She had just had her first child and she had just moved to the suburbs and it was 7.30 at night and we we're having this conversation and she was gonna take an hour train to like kiss her baby on the head before she turned around at 6 a.m. the next day. And I, I, I always knew it wasn't for me, but that was the moment where I was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. This isn't the life that I want. And there has to be another way. Um, So to me, the big challenge every day is continuing to um, adapt and build a business that I can provide the flexibility that I've created in my own life um, to be able to raise two children. Um, I actually, a side story is I, um, I launched this business between my fourth and fifth miscarriage. So while I moved out West, you know, aiming to start a family and have this idyllic lifestyle, I then started trying and it took me three and a half years to have my first child. So I started the business at a point where I wasn't sure I was going to have a family. So the business is my first baby. Um, when I finally then dove in and launched the business, of course, eight months later, it was my fifth, pre- my sixth pregnancy and it was my son and it was different and who knows why, but God bless him. His name is life. Um, and so both, and then my daughter was a total surprise. So both of my kids have grown up in the business. Um, I have been behind a desk, uh, monitoring a retail shop, um, either nursing a baby or pumping, um, for my baby later, I've been on many ferries pumping. (laughs) Um, I've done it all, but I really do it because I believe that there's a different way to run a business that can be equitable. I don't believe in balance. Um, I believe in, I don't like that word, but I believe in a pendulum that swings and sometimes it swings all the way over here where you really need to be focused the most on your family. And sometimes it swings over here where most of your energy is on your work. And that's okay, as long as it keeps swinging. Um, And that's what keeps me motivated and fulfilled. We're um, a team of 15 employees, 14 women. (laughs) We do hire everyone, um, but we we tend to attract women. And we've had many babies from our crew. And I think that's probably what I'm the most proud of. Um, And babies who come to work too. (laughs) So. So inspiring and such a, such a power move. And and I think as we talk about embrace equity, it's seeing uh, different views of how things are supposed to go, which is what you're talking about. Um, So great. Lauren, I'd love to talk about you. You talked about feeling burnt out in the corporate world. And now you're, you're in the small business world wearing so many hats. I mean, we all know the pace is, is, you know, unrelent, unrelenting. I'd love to have you talk a little bit about how you center yourself and keep yourself balanced while managing it all, or maybe how you keep that pendulum swinging back and forth, I should say, while you manage it all. Yeah. I think Audra, how you put it is, perfect. And I, I also speak about it in cycles, different cycles of my life and what cycle am I in and being okay with that cycle. So my cycle right now is focused on my kids and work. Um, and at times it's been able to be work and working out. I was like a very, uh, intense marathon runner at part in my life. You know, there was travel and work. And so it's kind of just figuring out what cycle of life are you in and knowing that you can't do all the cycles, all the things in each cycle. So what are my priorities? And then being okay to let the other ones drop a little bit. Um, I think if I get like a 30 minute walk right now, I'm really happy. (laughs) And I used to do 15 mile runs in a day. So it's definitely full swing. Um, And I think also, um, saying no a lot more. And I think as women, it's hard to say no. It's, it's really hard to be like, you know, there's only so many opportunities for us. I need to take all the things and all that say yes to all the stuff. And, and that's how I felt I got burnt out was feeling there was only one seat at the table. And if I didn't go grab that, then, you know, there wouldn't be another opportunity, but in more time passing, it's, prioritizing myself and saying no more um, and also asking for help, which is something I really struggle with. Uh, But I'm a single mom now of two kids. And so having to ask for help from my girlfriends, from my parents, you know, places that I, you know, honestly had a hard time being vulnerable enough to ask for help in the past. I have to ask for a lot more help now and say no a lot and focus on my cycle of life right now. I love that. 
I learned a term this week I've been embracing, which is, you know, I think we've all heard the fear of missing out. I learned the joy of missing out, JOMO. And it is, it is such a thing to uh, celebrate and, and those no's that create all the space for the yes. So that's just, it's such a, a powerful concept. Katie Mega Babe has evolved and, uh, you know, you've had quite the story since that first month selling everything out of the garage. I'd love to have you talk a little bit about how you think about evolving your business and, and creating momentum. Yeah. Um, I also want to say, I don't know if I'm supposed to be involved in the chat, but everything you guys are saying is so spot on. I feel like I, I want to yell. So I'm in there in the chat. Um, uh, momentum as a small business owner is so important. And it's also really hard, especially when you are a small team and you're just like every day, it's like one step forward, two steps back. Like, um, it's hard out there. I, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's easy. Um, I think having a team around me that is like, supportive and positive. And that's what we have right now with mega babe. And I, it makes me feel so good. Um, but basically I have, I have two goals. I want everyone, every, everyone in the world to be within five minutes of a, you know, it's like everyone in the world, but like many people in the world to be five minutes away from a mega babe thigh rescue stick. You need it. You're on vacation, you're out walking, whatever. I want you to be able to jump in your car, go get it wherever you are. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm always kind of working towards. The next is shining light into places that are still shameful. So I'm always thinking of new products and new places to go. My sister's like, can we just make a body wash? And I'm like, no, you don't need a body wash from us. You need something, um, you need something special from our company. So I'm always going in that direction. And I think that that, that keeps momentum going, momentum going for me. And um, also the fact that there's so much education needed around our products. Like people don't know what chafe is, but they know that they don't like wearing dresses in the summer because their legs hurt. So it's like constantly preaching, um, you know, the, the merits of our products that I think keeps us going too. So neat. Angela, as you think about dreaming, uh, for your business, um, what are your hopes and dreams for Saver Beauty? What's next? And how do you think about moving towards that vision? Well, I think, first of all, I can relate to everyone's stories here, you know, being a single mom and Audra, your baby being your first baby being your business and Katie Innovative Products. And so um, I think for us, we're launching a, a Radiant Sun Milk SPF 50 that's clean. It's um, it, it's, it hits all the marks that I want to hit as, um, as the vision for the company. And, um, and so we're, we want to continue making these innovative products. I just returned from Thailand where we opened up our first, um, Bangkok spa. And so we have two spas in Manhattan and where we sell our products and we partner with a lot of women owned spas. And I think that's so exciting to be able to partner with these very powerful women many of whom made the leap from corporate, many of whom started from nothing, many of whom are just like me, you know, came from, I was an artist. I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship. I had to, you know, learn things the hard way. Um, I call it the school of hard knocks. And so continuing to grow and, and getting the Saver Beauty products out there into the hands that's clean, it's natural, it works, it's made small batch in New York. Um, and just building our workforce because I love hiring women. I think they're, and, and men too, but I, I love how intuitive and powerful and smart the women around the table are. Um, they push me to the next level. And Cassie, as you were talking about, you know, one of our bestsellers, surprise bestsellers is not even a beauty product. Um, it's a self-care planner, Saver Beauty self-care planner, and it's goal setting, but it's a lot of what these women were talking about because I think, um, because I was never in corporate, sometimes I get um, a little bit envious of the nine to five, because as an entrepreneur, you really have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders, right? I always joke and say, I'll make a six figure decision and then sweep the floors if I have to, you know, everything in between. 
So it's, it's what I call gorgeous chaos. And so just organizing your gorgeous chaos through our self-care planner has been a surprise hit. Like we've sold over a hundred thousand copies of it and women love it because I think we balance a lot, you know, motherhood, um, the employees, the demands that you don't go to bed, you go to bed thinking about all of this. So how do you get that organized and how do you prioritize self-care? So these are just some of the exciting projects that I, I have. And I think the biggest thing that I would love to do is empower women with self-love rituals, self-care rituals through our products or beauty products. So great. Well, I'll tell you, we, we got self-care planners for our women's network, um, chairs around. And one of the things that has started in one of our sites is, almost like a, a group related to it and talking through it. And it's just such a powerful tool. I think my favorite page is the detox your brain, which there's never enough for that, but that's a that lot of personality about managing our gorgeous chaos. I've learned so many new, awesome terms today. I love, mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. Audra, as you think about anyone dreaming, you know, there's people on the webinar thinking about their dream of starting a business, what advice would you have for them? Um, I think it's twofold. Uh, I, I think a lot of people rush into starting their own business. And for me, while it was somewhat accidental, um, there was definitely a light bulb moment that I was waiting for. I knew that I wanted to run a business and have that lifestyle. Um, but I, um, I knew also knew that the chances of success were very small <laughs> for starting your own business and being successful. So I was waiting for something that felt, and I always use the term felt inspired. But what I do mean by that is this light bulb moment. And for me, that light bulb moment was when I was having this conversation with my neighbors and they said, these are 120 year old Bartlett pear trees. And I said, nobody's doing anything with this fruit. And they said, look around. And I looked around Orcas and dotted throughout the landscape were these trees that from a legacy orchard industry that was no longer a commercial industry um, and nobody was doing anything with the fruit. And that's when the light bulb went off and I was like, there's a beautiful story to tell here. There is, there's, there is a business model of using something that's going to waste, but there's a beautiful story about revitalizing an industry um, and talking about things um, uh, as they were started long ago, and also then modernizing them. What we're trying to do is be this modern twist on a very classic way of preserving. And we're inspired by these legacy orchards that have been producing for over 100 years. And for me, it mirrored my own personal story. Um, because when I started this business, I was looking for roots, I needed some roots, because I wasn't able to create the family roots that I was craving. Um, so I found it in the business. So wait, I'd say, you know, way to feel inspired. Um, it's it, it, Katie, this, this feels very relevant. I mean, you waited until you had this idea of something that was needed and useful and, 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 um, and powerful. Um, and then also, uh, the, the, the other side of that is have a nest egg. Um, to me, that was really important um, because I'm so committed to running the business my way in a way that I think offers my employees their best lives. Um, I couldn't do that unless I was able to self-fund. Um, I know there are different ways around that, but for me to be able to, I made choices to self-fund my business, to take things off my plate, to hire somebody to do things that i maybe should should have been doing, but I chose not to because I wanted to be with my two-year-old. Um, so to me, that was a really important um, decision was to not get into this unless I had put some money aside to be able to fund myself in those moments where I had to make really stressful decisions where I'd have to choose between my family uh, and my business. So inspiring. One of the things you said that I, I love, and I think it's such good advice for women, particularly in a mold that like, like shoes, nothing was sort of constructed for us. This idea that you can write your own story, right? It's not this reality to be played out that is someone else's, but it is a story that you can shape. And I think the more you can think about that, your, your journey that way, it just is such such an amazing journey. I love the Jim Henson creator of the Muppets has a quote, life is a movie, write your own ending. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just such a way, a fun way to think about what we can go forward and do together. Absolutely.
it's International Women's um, Day. The, um, we're celebrating the month. The day uh, focus, the theme was Embrace Equity. And I'd love to hear from each of you. What does that mean to you? How do you think about embracing equity? Angela, let's start with you. Well, I think as entrepreneurs, we're very, very fortunate that we can create our almost our little worlds and make uh, small micro changes. And so I hear a lot of the women here and me included hiring women and giving them a fair wage to be able to live uh, their best lives. And, you know, for me, it was very important to give women the flexibility um, to be able to bring their you know, in our warehouse and our facility where we make the products, let them bring their babies and children to work as needed. Um, you know, through the beauty products, I talk a lot about feminine energy and embracing that and not thinking that it's weaker or that it's less than um, man, masculine power, that it could be actually go, go head to head and toe to toe with it and be equally powerful. And accessing our intuition, celebrating the softer skills that we can bring to the table that can make a huge difference. Um, and then, you know, the self-care planners, as I was mentioning, prioritizing self-care so that women can live their best lives and have a life of well-being so that they can give to others from a cup that overflows, you know, and celebrating the, that you can make a huge difference in those ways. And I, I have to say, I am so impressed, Cassie, with you and, and your team and, and the whole Intuit supportiveness, the, the energy of support that I'm feeling. That's how you support women and embrace the equity, right? You try to buy consciously from women-owned businesses because women know what they're doing. You know, I, I can just hear it from this group that we're putting conscious dollars so that it makes a bigger difference in the community. I love that. Lauren, what about you? What does embrace equity mean? Yeah, I think, um, Angela, you did such a great job talking to it. And I think, you know, there's some that really resonate for me as well at Sage and something that we do a lot of um, creating that softer skill environment and creating more open vulnerability. Um, we, from my time at Lululemon, we, I brought over this idea of, we start every meeting with a question. Um, and it could be something like, okay, what made you smile today? Like what, you know, what was the thing, what, if you were a fruit, what would you be today? <laughs> you know, and it's just really been cool to see some people who come from more, you know, hard industries, you know, sitting there being like, I was an apple today because, but it, it, what was great is it brought equity within each meeting of like, we all were going to connect. We all were going to kind of break down our wall and just those little things that I think like lean into the beautiful skills as women that we might have a little more, um, you know, the softer skills. Um, I think for us also equity is seeing all parts of the woman and, you know, definitely with us at Sage, like the mothers being a mom is something that I think there's still a big struggle to be seen in the workforce. And, we are trying to create programs and push so that the bigger, um, bigger industries and bigger brands see that it's a need. So like our maternity returns program, which is, you know, if your foot shoe, if your foot changes size while you're pregnant or postpartum, which a lot of us, it did and does, you can let us know and we'll give you a brand new pair of shoes for free because, you know, there are moms out there. We, we are unseen. We're not, you know, we're almost kind of hushed to the side, but everyone should be doing that. You know, everyone should be seeing the mom, um, seeing the changes that we go through. And so pushing equity at Sage, but then also outside and in the industry and really trying to sit, let people know that everyone, everyone should kind of be making these steps. And um, we need to let women have that seat at the table and moms and, you know, be seen as well. Love it. Katie, what about you? Embrace equity. Don't call on me right now. I am <laughs> still, I'm like tearing up over these answers. They're so good. And uh, I know they're so good. 
It's just something, <laughs> it, there's just something about having a group like this together. It's so powerful. And um, I think I, I think both Angela and Lauren have already said so much that I would say I would just add to the conversation that I think um, destigmatizing problems that normal bodies have um, is something that can be very empowering for women and helps women feel less alone. I said this already, but I think there's something a uh, there's a really big opportunity there when we get rid of focusing on some of those superficial issues we've been taught to care about and focus on. We can really channel our own power and help each other grow and find out what what's really going to move us all forward versus uh, cutting each other down with like these very silly superficial things that we've been taught to focus on. Oh, Audra. You're up. Embrace equity. Wow. I mean, it, it certainly is challenging to add <laughs> something substantive to this conversation. Um, it's really inspiring to hear the words from Lauren and Angela and Katie um, and how you guys are putting your money where your mouth is, really, <laughs> um, in terms of embracing equity and um, celebrating and supporting women, um, women supporting women. Um, I think for us as a very... Uh, we could be viewed as a traditional business. Um, the heart of things gets back to um, sharing a table together. And when I when I started this business, uh, we launched around, I always say we launched around my Thanksgiving table. I had all my family over and this was before kids. And I put the inaugural 30 cases on the table and I said, okay, everybody, before we break bread, um, label, let's label this jam and let's do it together. And then we'll break bread together. But I feel like that's the heart and soul of our business, but it's also um, really, uh, I think, in line with the theme of embracing equity, because when we level it all down, um, we are all very much the same. We have this, we, we, we recognize things that we share in our commonalities when we sit down at the table together. So our whole, all of our lines are oriented around um, celebrating. And just celebrating those small human moments that we do share, even though maybe we are so different. Um, and then secondly, I would say it's about, um, you know, we're making jam in six copper pots. <laughs> uh, a very traditional uh, feminine uh, occupation, but we're also fully women owned and operated full um, 100% um, women management team. We just got our WBN, uh, BNC uh, women owned business certification this year, which we're really super proud of um, because we're showing you can do these feminine things um, and, and be powerful. Um, and to me, that's a really important duality. It's so important. It's so important. I love everything, everything that you all said. And I think one of the things you you all underscored is some of the smaller things. You know, I think as I, in the leadership role, there are things I have to do that are so important, like goal setting and holding people accountable to what our diversity and inclusion um, looks like. But I've also found that sometimes it's so easy to think about big things, like how many women are getting promoted when there are also small things that are equally important, like how many women or diverse voices get to speak in a meeting and what does that look like? These smaller decisions. And I think small decisions like choosing that instead of ordering the Amazon thing that would be at your house in, you know, a day, getting out and driving to the female run business that you want to support or any business that you want to support or, you know, online having that as well and, and having that be a choice that you're making. So really voting with your money. I also have been trying to think about where I vote for my time. I, I found that there were a lot of cases where I was saying the right things. I was definitely charging my credit card in the right way, but I wasn't necessarily investing my time. And one thing that has been really powerful, I did it for my daughter, but it's probably been more powerful for, for my, for me has been to think about investing time. Like, you know, I live in San Francisco in a cool neighborhood. Uh, and yet one of six families in my area struggles with um, putting food on the table. And so how do we spend two hours once a month to go to a food pantry and 
you know, see other, you see a lot of women and children who are just in a different situation and feel like that's embracing equity, that we all deserve this. And, and I'm going to vote with my time. So I've been, I keep trying to commit to do more and more of that, because I think as, as all of you shared, you have these inspiring stories where whether it's, you know, pumping at your desk, that sets a new tone and a new model for how things could be and should be. And it's just so inspiring. It's so inspiring. Katie, I'm with you. I like that you were using the chat. It is just amazing. I keep I keep writing things down myself. So I so appreciate it. And I think before we go into Q&A, we might have a time for a couple quick rapid fire questions. But Jasmine, is do we have time or do I need to wrap up and make sure we've got time for audience questions? Um, I think we have a little bit of time to do rapid fire and then I will get to the Q&A right after. Okay, we'll, we'll do it quickly. Angela, what is the favorite product that you sell? Oh my gosh, it's definitely the truffle face cream. It's our best seller. Oprah just featured it. We're, we love it. We're excited about it. It has vitamin B to restore skin's luminosity. Who doesn't love a great face cream? Amazing. It's number and four. Oprah Love, uh, congratulations. I know. I can't believe it. It took 10 years, but we got it. <laughs> yes. Audra, what is your favorite pantry item? Um, our lemon lavender shrub. This is the most adorable little thing you've ever seen. We do little four packs of these mini shrubs. They're sweet and sour mixers for cocktails and mocktails. Just add sparkling water, instant um no alcohol drink or add in your favorite spirit. But what I love about it is, and we also, this is the full size. Um, if you don't have lemons in your pantry and you're a cook and you just need that hit of acidity, this is in my pantry for a little splash of lemon. Um, the lavender is super subtle. Uh, that's my fave. Well, that is a new life hack. I'm never with the lemon juice that I need for recipes. Katie, this is going to be a tough one. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Or a good piece of advice you can remember right now to tell. I, I, okay, this is, I will, I'll butcher it, but it's ride the horse in the direction it's going. Is that, I, I think that, you know, instead of fighting what's happening, you got to kind of sometimes just go. You know what? I love that because I would always say someone once would talk about like play the ball where it lies, like a golf analogy. And I was like, that's so dude-ish. Like, I don't play I don't golf. even know like, what, what that means. I, I don't even know what that means. Yeah. You know what it means? Ride the horse in the direction it's going. I love that. Lauren, you have to tell us how the name Seish came to be. Yeah. So um, Seish in different spelling is a wave in an enclosed body of water that when there's the wave, it creates uh, balance and um, Allison and Wes's parent, uh, dad is a pastor. Their mom is really into calligraphy. And so they found that word and then they kind of just changed the Y, the I from Y, cause they liked how the Y looked in it. And so I think it's about creating that equity and balance, um, by women having their own shoes made for them. So neat. Well, you are all sheroes. Thank you for, just being who you are and creating what you've created. It's so clear, not only from the products you sell, but as you each talk about the way you run the business, that is just having such a positive effect on so many people and, and really setting a new tone for, for how business can go. And I'm just so personally inspired by it. Before we get into our Q&A segment, you know, we are celebrating so many events and Angela, you are very, very nice to use my name in the appreciation, but it is really an army of women who have just been a driving force in, in what is happening um, at our company for what we do for our customers, what we do for each other. We have a We Care and Give Back initiative, one of our core values. So all of the Intuit employees on, on the line today, we have a goal of raising $50,000 for causes that pertain to ending violence against women and girls and need your support to reach that goal. And remember you get a match. So we are well on our way. 
Be sure to ask your local Intuit Women's Network co-chair for any activations or ways you can get involved now or as the year goes on. And we will make sure to pop the link in the chat so you have everything you need to give to these amazing organizations um, and to support these amazing business owners that we have here today. With that, Jasmine, I'll turn it to you to have our Q&A. Amazing. Thanks so much, Cassie. Um, okay. So for the last few minutes, we would like to open up the floor to questions. Feel free to message in the Zoom Q&A any questions you have. You will find that at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we already have some have some here. So um, I think we have we've about five minutes to go through this. So um, Audra, let's let's have you as the first one. Um, question for you. I'm always mystified about how you go from product idea to actually getting it produced to like the nitty gritty of those steps. Who do you call? How do you scale something you made at home? Um, you know, we are still fully handmade. Um, we're, we're on our, this is our 10th year anniversary and we still make every single thing in our, our little jam factory in Orcas Island. So, uh, we have learned by making mistakes. <laughs> uh, that's how you learn. Uh, I, I, the first two seasons, I made everything myself. I worked out of a borrowed kitchen at a local restaurant. I packed everything in, packed everything out. And I just watched how everyone else did everything around me. Um, but I really taught myself how to make jam. And then the shrubs were kind of um, a product that just fell in my lap. We had fruit juice as a byproduct for making our cutting preserves, which are highly concentrated fruit purees like a quince paste or membrio. Um, and I had stumbled a, a, a upon a recipe for shrubs and thought this is perfect and it fits right into the ethos of what we're doing. So I just developed a recipe from there. Um, I think definitely lean on people who can give you advice. There are state and local um, uh, processing authorities that can help you um, find if you're not looking to actually manufacture things yourself. Um, they can give you resources for local co-packers, which is somebody who would produce your product for you. Um, otherwise, they can give you um, ideas and information for how to take the steps to um, scale your own manufacture, your own manufacturing. Um, but you really have to just get on the horn and start asking questions. Um, and I've had a lot of people, I mean, I reached out a lot to a lot of people in the same industry and asked them for advice and was really surprised with how open people were about sharing. So nowadays I return the favor when people who are looking to start a product, even if it's a competing product, reach out to me about how do I do this or where do I look? Um, I'll answer their emails and get on the phone with them just to to um, return the favor, spread the love. Awesome. Awesome. I think that just goes to show how important community is and being able to lean on other people here. Um, okay. Next question for Angela. How has your previous musical experience helped you maintain your skincare and self-care line? Do you think they tie in together in some kind of way? Yes. I'm not afraid of rejection. And, um, you know, I was used to practicing things thousands of times until I reached um, my artistic vision. And so, you know, just like Audra just said, you know, made so many mistakes, but I'm not scared of them because I, I really actually don't even see failures. I don't know if you have to be delusional to be an entrepreneur or if I just am personally delusional, but when there's a fail, I always like, am like, oh, there's a lesson here. So therefore it's a success, you know? So I think that's what I learned from my piano career. And also I believe that whatever career careers you're about to have, there are always transferable skills. So for me, it was, I was on stage all the time. So I developed a certain ease with public speaking. I can run meetings very easily on the fly. And so there are always, I always say, no matter what career you're in, you can take those skills and transfer it into the next. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love that. Um, all right, Katie, here is a question for you. I feel like no one no one also talks about all the weird body stuff that happens during perimenop perimenopause and menopause. I am super interested in your products because it feels like they speak to me, speak to some of these physical changes. Is that a direction you might go in terms of speaking to women in this stage of life? Thanks for being so real. Well, I will say as someone who has not gone through menopause, I am so grateful for women who have started companies and brands who are addressing those issues and talking about it because I feel like there's just kind of this closed door 
It's like you can have a baby and then we don't talk about what happens after that and you'll figure it out when you get there. And I love the I love that that women are finally taking it upon ourselves to address those issues. I have heard on the mega babe front that people love our body dust and our dust puff to um, help with like hot flashes, sweat, things like that. Um, which makes me so happy. Also body chemistry changes, your deodorant needs might change. I love that we're able to help with, with those issues, but yeah, menopause. I, I like that people are finally shining a light on that and helping ne the next generations understand what we will go through as women in our lifetimes, hopefully. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, okay. And then we have one time for one last question. So Lauren, um, what were you doing before working at Sage and how was that transition into working at Sage? Um, before Sage, I was working at New Balance and I was managing their women's collaborations. So, um, working with, you know, the fashion brands like Stodd, um, you know, any of kind of the big, bigger collaborations we were doing. Um, and, you know, before that I had been at Lululemon at their head office for five years and just really always been in kind of the sport industry. Um, and yeah, my, my husband at the time had gotten a job and I was on my second child pandemic, working from home, trying to do all the things and just got really burnt out. So had quit and actually was thinking of starting my own, um, maternity apparel company, because I feel like that's another huge hole in the market that just is so underserved. And yeah, then, um, I knew Wes from my new balance days and heard what they were doing. And, you know, Allison has been a mentor, a idol for me, you know, as a, as a runner, as a mom, as a woman in business, um, and just felt like it was my calling to be a part of what they wanted to build and really, disrupt the sport industry that I've been a part of for 16 years and bring something new and bring change um, focused around women. Um, and it has been incredibly different than being at these big brands because, you know, you are, a, I'm a team of one. Um, I don't have any direct reports. I, there's no one helping, you know, it's really, uh, it's on me to, to get it done. And also the ability to really come in and make change and seeing Allison like at the White House and seeing, you know, her on the cover of Time and Vogue and Oprah's favorite things and just it, we're getting there and it's so cool and, and the work doesn't feel like work because it's for a mission and a, and a passion that I'm so invested in. Beautiful. If, I mean, if you're working that much during the day, you better like it. That's, that's <laughs> yes. I like in the work I'm doing that. I've got to change yes. something. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. A huge thank you to Audra, Angela, Lauren, Katie, Cassie, and everyone else for joining our small biz pop-up. If you want to order any of their products and help support these businesses, check out the links that we've posted in the Zoom chat. And now for the really, really exciting part. So this year for Women's History Month, we opted to use our budget to support women-owned small businesses instead of paying for a big ticket speaker. This initiative is part of our FY23 strategic pillars to advocate for our members, our customers, and the communities we serve. As such, IWN has purchased items from each of these small businesses, and we want to give them to you. Um, after this event, you will be able to opt in to receive a surprise from your favorite small business today. Um, so you can fill out the contact information on your chosen business and IWN will handle the rest. Quick reminder, you have to be an IWN member to receive these goods. Um, you'll have your choice between a pair of shoes from Seish, a curated self-care set from Mega Babe, a customizable 90-day planner from Saver Beauty, and a pantry set full of shrubs and preserves from Girl Meets Dirt. I'll post these links in IWN Global um, in the Slack channel, and then you'll be able to choose from everything there. Uh, once they are closed, it means that we've reached capacity for that business, um, but you should be able to click on one of the other links and choose another small business here today. Uh, quantities are limited, so we are going to limit it to one small business per person, so be sure to choose your favorite, and details on each offering will be located on each Google form. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for supporting our small businesses. Enjoy the rest of your Friday, and happy shopping. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs>
That was so awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you. That was great. I'm so happy everyone loved it. Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. 